February the 22nd, 2019. As you're looking at the NOAA and National Weather Service combined information, it's uh, real-time solar wind, it's some space weather prediction center. The National Weather Service is involved because space weather is Earth's weather. That's not all it is when it comes to affecting Earth. I did a video a couple of days ago talking about this increase in solar wind speed and that slash quake watch. Remember, you, if you've been with me for five or six years, you've seen many of these. I wish they would put it in the science books, but again, that's what we're here to do. In this chart, in the purple line here, you have the solar wind speed. It's in kilometers per second right there. And you see a jump here, and this is all uh, in the last day. You're coming in from midnight right here, universal time, which is 00, 0400, 0800 hours. Right here, we had this peak that I was watching for. And, guys, it's every year the science increases, the knowledge base, and if you study this. And so what we're dealing with right now, you're looking at 506 kilometers per second, guys. I'll do the math on that in just a minute, but the importance of the video is that when you have, uh, when we're in solar maximum, our shields are strong because the dynamo of the earth that produces these magnetic lines of force around us that are our shields gets its energy from the sun. So when you've got a lot of coronal mass ejection, solar flares, things like that, the shields are strong, but our shields are weak. And so uh, again, the science is uh, adding to itself as we go through solar minimum. It's going to become dangerous because even though, and we'll take a look at this, if you do the math on this, and I think it peaked right in here, right there at 507, that's 1.134 million miles per hour. That's almost unfathomable to think about that. Extremely fast. So as it stri strikes our outer shields, that energy is fed into the earth, the shields are compressed, the crust of the planet is compressed, and you have the quakes. And remember, remember the quakes are in universal time on the USGS site, and this solar wind speed is also universal time. Notice here, it gives you that information. So again, here was midnight as we went into the day, 507 here, as far as kilometers per second, again, 1.134 million miles an hour. Then it takes, depending on the speed of the wind. Now, I've seen solar wind speed guys hit 1,600 kilometers per second. And that, but we had shields that were stronger. Still, it caused quakes. But now that we have these weaker shields, the quakes will become more intense with less solar wind. It's not going to take as much force, in other words. But as it passed it, remember, it passes the satellites first, then it strikes our planet. And you can see this was this came in at 10 17 22 today UTC time. This is a 7.5. It's 115 kilometers east southeast of Pilar, Ecuador. Now it was on shore. It was right on the border of Peru and Colombia. But they had it's uh, not a real high populated area. There are no tsunami warnings because it was far enough on shore. It was also a deep quake at 132.4 kilometers deep. But guys, this is the science that people need to pay attention to because it can save lives. If it would be part of uh, just like a tornado warning or a hurricane warning or anything like that, if they would adapt that into the quake warnings worldwide, it would save thousands of lives over time in just one event. If they had been watching the solar flare that we tracked that left the surface of the sun and struck Japan at the same time the tsunami hit, when the quake hit, the 9.0, it killed a lot of people. It started the worst disaster in the history of our planet because Fukushima is still leaking. And they try to shut it down. Any information come out, coming out of there, they've shut down major websites that reported on Fukushima. It's a disaster that keeps on giving. And they wonder why you have the dial for the salmon runs and the seals and the fisheries and all the shellfish are dying off along the, our west coast. But anyway, the sun, that would have not prevented the earthquake, 
but it would have got a lot of people to higher grounds. They may have had time to uh, turn, or take down the nuclear plant as far as uh, a shutdown, and, but no one pays attention to the science. It's too obvious, and it should be incorporated in all warnings. In other words, when you get a solar wind speed increase from a coronal hole or from a solar flare, this should go out automatically. But maybe uh, that's why a lot of you guys watch this channel. Well, we're watching it, guys. We're still in an uh, elevated solar wind speed. It should be dying off. But they were talking about and the auroras last night were brilliant. And, guys, like I said, the shields are weak. That solar wind speed at 507 kilometers per second would not normally cause a 7.5 quake. It would take a little stronger impact. But with weak shields, you're going to get more auroras with less, and you're going to get greater quakes. We're watching it, guys. So heads up. Be safe.